going to look at our couple of videos of hitting, uh, actually getting to the back as context for how the office information is important for this. Um, biggest thing is that we're going to start from now, so it's seamless from last week, uh, and then we'll uh, get into just the basic option for what to do for the TAC. Um, Wednesday is going to be being submission based, and then we'll do our escapes. Okay? So, uh, Chris. So we are in the mount position. We're going to do a simple way of getting to the back, which we actually hit on already as part of our, our last week's sequence. Um, and then we're going to show you a fancy way of getting to the back, which is, I don't want to say it's silly, but it's maybe not the first option you should go for. Okay? But if you want to get put on a highlight reel uh, from a competition, it's the one you go for. Okay? Uh, but I don't advise it. So, it force the guy just to turn to his side. So same thing we did before, pushing on the arm. That gets him to commit to roll, or again, I can even just sometimes just by grabbing onto the gi here and just grabbing his wrist, like I can just kind of shove him onto his side, lifting the shoulder up. But I have to watch out, I hide my foot so he doesn't trap it. Okay? Or you just do the basic push for the key lock, and then as he twists, my foot again goes up into the hip here, and then I adjust into the shoulder line. So our grips, so you can see, our grips after he rolls. My arm that goes underneath his head is looking to trap his wrist. My other arm goes underneath his arm and it grabs my own wrist. As I explained last week, you can take the back off this, off this, or just off your seatbelt in general, but this is, seems to be the most control. Okay? Now, if you are reaching through and you can't, he's hiding his arm at all, just use your top arm, pass that hand over, and then grab your own wrist and you want to kind of buckle down and try and get that chest to back connection right away. Now, most common mistake, which could honestly lead to an injury is kicking your foot out and trying to sit this way because remember he wants to try and defend his position so if I start to sit that way which I'm not going to risk my knee right now but he then starts to bridge to slide over if my foot was locked out in this position and then it starts bridging you can imagine I'm like the inside my knee is not going to be too good for that so very important detail both for mobility and protection is that my foot behind tucks in against his back okay that way I can just sit right over my ankle, straight to my butt, and I'm not falling in line with his position. I'm gonna pull him to the cross side shoulder where then I get my clean back take. Okay, again. So either just force him to roll and slide up, but remember I need to close the space so he doesn't just tuck back in here, okay? Or push, foot, knee slides up, Sit down, grab the wrist. If I can't find it, push it down. Reach through and grab your own wrist and tighten up. So tuck your foot in against his back so I can sit naturally. And then roll all the way to the cross side shoulder where now I have his back. Okay? So that's the first option for a back take. The sensible one. The other one, if you remember, it's very uh, bare mobile-esque. Remember when you're working from side control? If I get him to commit to bring the other leg up and I trap this leg, I can roll through and take it back. I can do that from mount as well. But again, it wouldn't be the smartest thing to do necessarily. So what's going to happen here is I'm in mount. Maybe he's really kind of gluing his shoulders down. I feel like I don't have many options from on top here, which if you didn't have that many options, I don't know why you would think that doing this move would be great. But let's just say, okay? From here, all I'm going to do is make sure that this leg gets nice and hooked up on his leg here. So almost think grapevine, but I don't want my hips to slide up and I need some mobility. So my arms just come to one side. I slide that knee down. So that's the one I'm really hooking with. I slide. Don't aim with your hand through your leg because you'll jam yourself up. But you're going to slide off on the outside of your leg here. And then now I just have to throw my butt. Not this way. A lot of people have an issue with that. I'm trying to bring him off to the side that I'm rolling to. So I roll here. Now, as I roll, see this leg has to be nice and hooked up. And just like the Baron Bowl, as my legs come through, I'm trying, trying to loop my legs, grabbing for his pant leg, forcing him to kneel, hip escape, and get your back. So again, it's a little bit tougher than when we do it from side control, but it's there. So again, mount, tuck, and now as I go to roll and throw my hips, I can't let myself separate from. I have to kind of throw my leg in and hook up. So again, from here, 
tuck back. Roll, cross for strength, and then as I roll, I extend him back. I don't want him to fall flat. Think about making him kneel. So I sit up with him, go for a deeper grip on the back. I hit the tape and pull him back into place. Okay, so just as a fun little bonus technique, nice loose sort of back tape. Fancy. Okay, so work that, we'll set up our back and we'll go through our basic techniques. Okay, let's go. Trying to do loosely, depends on what's going on. Um, but the, the week prior, like so if we were about to hit him out two weeks beforehand in the non-basics, I try to do something along those lines, just to help kind of preset the mind um, and work on it, and we can reverse that to a couple weeks after just so that you have those details are a bit sharp. Um, so you remember we did a little bit of work from half guard and we did a little bit of work from the back um, during the OB and everything else. Um, Chris? So we ended up taking the guys back. Now first and foremost, we have to understand that the seat position is unrealistic unless we're just starting specific or we're starting you know, EBI rules if I choose to go from this position. Um, because he will never want to give me this mobility of being able to adjust that will. Right? He's going to want to try and use the map at all times to try and block me. So you have to remember that even though we're drilling our positions from here, you have to keep in mind that we're not actually ever really truly going to fight. Okay? So hooks, feet in. Very important for my control. Seat belt, just like it sounds like, one under the shoulder, one over the shoulder, and I am trying to create chest to back connection. So I'm trying to hold in tight. Think like you're giving the guy high work, okay? Nice and nice and tight. Okay? If I, he has space to move, he will move. And he can adjust to clear himself. Now, big bit with the feet. Points wise, I will not get points unless I have this. I have a have this, right? This, not hooks. Body triangle, oh, he's fat, okay. no points. This, no points, and if he crosses his feet over my ankles, he can get an ankle lock from here. You only make that mistake a couple times, okay? So, you tap. so last little detail here with our seatbelt though, is that generally speaking, the underside arm is always on top of the overside arm. So this is my dangerous arm, or the choking arm. So I want to protect it by holding onto it from here. Because in a scramble, when he quickly goes for wrist control, I want him to try and control and strip the non-important hand, not the one that I'm trying to choke him with. Okay? But realistically, especially he, when I'm here, most likely he's going to be kind of gathering up higher on the sleeve and you know, getting different grips. So it's not that big of a deal, but out of good habit, underside hand on him. Okay? So a rear naked choke. What I need to do first and foremost is get through his initial defense was just his, his chin. He's gonna tuck his chin down, hiding his neck. So, the detail, ice cream scoop. Now I saw a lot of guys this afternoon, they are trying to do the same roll, but with the high side of their arm, like so they're closer to being within the choke. If you think about your arm though, the way it twists, it's a bit harder to see with the uh, rash guard on. But when I roll my wrist here, like you can see like this, is barely moving at all, right? Of course there's movement in the arm itself, but here, you can, it's much more exaggerated as far as the twist. So when I get to his chin here, I want to be right at the wrist or even the back of my hand. And I want to overdo this. So again, I'm taking that big old ice cream scoop and I'm going for a hefty scoop, okay? Tight in, thumb in. I'm not being delicate about this, okay? I'm going, it's been a long emotional week. It's a lot of ice cream, okay? So, tuck in and I bring the back of my hand to his chin. Once I make contact, now I scoop the ice cream out, and that's what rolls the hand underneath. And of course, with some tension pulling up, okay? But again, if I'm here trying to use the blade of my hand to sneak underneath, and then trying to roll, I run out of juice, okay? So I need to make sure that I put the back of my hand in, and then I curl up to get underneath. Now, second detail from here. As I wrap his neck, a lot of people, they push through, because they're trying to get the bicep as deep as possible, but then they leave this section open, which means he'll turn his head, he turns his head to where the open gap is, drop his chin, and then now he's back underneath again, okay? And of course, a lot of this can be mitigated with just being mean with my arm pressure, because I can just reef his neck and twist his neck and everything else if he starts trying to do that, but you always want to try and base our technique on being as clean and as technical as possible. So, seatbelt, underside over top there. So I bring my wrist back of the hand, remember ice cream scoop, right to his chin, and I make contact with it, and then I curl up. And then from here, when I wrap his neck, again, I don't create an opening. I coil around, so I go deep. I 
you know, trying to reach for my own trap. Now from here, I'm gonna secure my grip, or my, secure my arm while I'm in, in adjusting to my actual choke grip. Grab onto his trap, or even just you know, deep on his gi here, a little bit of a, a pinch going on the skin too, that helps. Okay, be careful guys. And just solidify. So that this way, for if he inevitably will be pulling down, I'm not just fighting him with strength, I have an actual secure grip. My hand comes out, and the first tap is going to be palm to palm. So my hand here just opens up, and then I bring that palm to meet it. Nice, strong gable grip. Don't do this or this kind of stuff. Okay, and again, and I don't want to flip here, because I open, I basically undo that, that roll I had. So, nice and tight, my elbow, forearm behind his back. And you see I'm almost facing off to the side here, so I can just focus on this arm. Now for the choke, elbow tucks into his chest, general flexing your bicep, making your arm strong, and think about pulling your hand in towards your shoulder as I push my shoulder towards my hand. So everything goes nice and tight here, and I almost use my head or my shoulder to push his head into the choke. But again, don't try and pull his head off of his shoulders. You're wasting energy and you're stretching the guy's neck, which is something we don't want, and it doesn't actually help the choke. Tuck down in and squeeze. Now a little detail with this grip, curl your wrist like so, like a cross choke, and twist the back of your hand towards it. <coughs> that way you get a lot of leverage just with the grips here and tighten up from that. Okay, so that's tap one. Tap two, I don't open my arm up and try and fold the hand in. Ideally, I'm trying to squeeze my hand through the back. So here, I just, I already have my hand in the right orientation, I just have to slide it, okay? But again, I try and sneak through, blade side down. It's a lot easier, especially when he has a big German head here, <laughs> to step through, okay? And to sneak it through, okay? And then elbows down, elbows together, flex, inhale, because you don't want to hold your breath and pass it before he does. And give your second tap, okay? So again, Seat belt, underside on top, come up. Now, guys taller than you guys, take a little butt scoot back, just create a little bit of space between your hips, that way I bring him lower. And you also have to think, most steps for these skates, what does he do? He scoots down, right? So you shouldn't really get into an issue with someone being above you, okay? But just for the seat, okay? So again, from here, chin's down, come up. Again, don't use this part of your arm. Bring the mid point, or go to your hand to his chest. Slide up. Coil it deep, hold on while you adjust, palm to palm, tap one, sneak the hand through, hold nice and tight, tap two, okay? Now, if for whatever reason on either of these, you're not getting the tap, we do have an option to make this nasty, okay? Now, here or from here. All I'm going to do is try and bring my choking arm behind his shoulder, but without releasing pressure. So if I'm here, what ends up happening is that I just make it a nasty choke. Here, his throat is fairly clear. This is all blood choke. But as soon as I start to pull my elbow back this way, I'm bringing the bar of my forearm right across his trachea. <coughs> and it's going to hurt. Okay? And also it helps give this a little more incentive to tap. Same thing from here. I'm like this. You start to pull the elbow behind. And you get the bar of the arm going. <coughs> okay? So use that one sparingly. But it's great for once guys just get a bit... You know, they're just giving themselves a little bit of time there, and then you just connect on oh, Sorry, buddy. Okay? Let's go. Cool. On finishing this, the big thing is that you, always, you don't want to fight the natural mechanics of your body. Okay? So, a lot of you, when you're doing the first option, so you rolled underneath, you got tight through, you got your grip, you're trying to finish the, the choke and, and maintain this kind of chest to back position, which for general control is good. But for this choke in particular, it's not as great. Because as I bring this shoulder forward, I end up loosening my hand. Now, when we do the full RNC, the rear naked choke, when I go through, as I bring this grip in, I tighten it up on the other side with this, okay, with this grip. That's what solidifies it. But if I'm going here, not to say that you're, you're going to completely have a, a, a shit choke if you turn this way, um, but it's different from what I was saying about the, the nasty version. The nasty version of pulling the elbow back this hand is welded in place. It doesn't shift. It's about me, sorry, I'm just gonna loosen this up. This doesn't affect what's happening with my elbow, okay? So if I had this in tight here, and I pull my elbow back, I'm not sliding, like wrapping, like my arms aren't a hula hoop that are 
going around his neck, right, creating space. So when you're on their back doing this, you notice how my chest is almost facing off the shoulders towards my hands. That way I can keep myself really, really tight in the position, okay? And then the second one ends up turning me in, but I equalize the pressure with the other grip, okay? And then again, from here, when I go for the nasty one, I'm not pushing my other side forward. It's just the one side coming back. Like your hand getting pinched in the door jam, right? It just closes. The hinges don't separate in all the space, okay? That'd be nice if they were saving me a lot of childhood. <laughs> so, from here. Now, um, uh, really quickly, just about our back control. Our seatbelt's important because one over, one under. I'm controlling a little bit of everything here. If I'm just holding around his waist, first of all, it'd be tough to attack his neck. And also here, I'm not stopping him from really sliding up or down. Or down, yes, but he can start to do that, you know, lazy seal. And I called it the last time. Don't worry, we'll go over that again this time. Um, and if I'm just around his neck like this, I have no control over his shoulder line. So for him to start to scrape and slide off my body is going to be really easy. Right? So you have to be pretty disciplined about maintaining, always trying to, if I switch one arm over, I'm always switching the other side. Okay? Now more towards the chokes. When I do have it locked in, remember we have a good side and a bad side. A choking side, or if we're taking it from the back perspective, which we'll talk about at the end of the week. We have a, a danger side to escape to, but. Uh, but it's easier to clear your shoulders to the mat and a tougher to escape to side, but safer. Now, they usually, meet, we're talking about the lapel chokes, but it, it applies for here too. So, in the rear naked choke, the worst thing he could do is look towards my hands, right? Yeah, exactly. Because what that is essentially doing was that nasty version. He's turning into the power, <coughs> that's where the lock is, right? What he wants to do is look into the choke, which is to basically face my shoulder here. Now, if I'm tight and locked up, it's not gonna do much, but especially, I have massive biceps, so he's gonna crush his throat. But when he turns his neck, it's here. When he turns his neck, right now, his trachea is facing this way and his arteries are getting closed off by the forearm and the bicep. As he turns in here, yeah, he's gonna get some pressure here, but this is a big fat object, so not very efficient at providing that sharp pain like your forearm is. And his arteries end up slipping into the crook of the elbow and the shoulder, and I can't close my shoulder, so I can't provide any more power. So if I fall on the wrong side, let's say I wrapped him up, and then I fall to the non-choking arm side. I want to fall to where the choke is. If I go here, see how he's kind of floating? It's really easy for him to start to turn and look into the choke. It's still going to suck, right? But he can survive, and eventually, I'm going to. This is awkward for me to keep him in. But on the other side, or if this switch arms. But on this side here, I, it's really easy for me to keep him still. If he turns the safe way or the safer to turn way, he ends up just exposing more of his back. And if he turns the wrong way, he puts himself into that nastier option. He chokes himself against the wrist. <coughs> Plus, it's easier for me to get to mount here because he's on the bottom. So if I do need a bail, it's easier to turn off from there. Okay, so when we're talking about realistically fighting from the back, and we're going for the rear naked choke, any version, if you have the option of sending him to one side, always send him towards the choke. That way you give them a lot less options. Um, one last point with that is you can always switch arms. So if you can't overpower them, you just rock the baby. Here it's tight, and then I just switch to the other side. So it works really quickly. And of course, guys, like when you're trying to strangle someone, you can't be too, too nice, but ultimately I'm not doing this kind of stuff. Okay? Remember, the idea with the choke is that if he didn't tap, this is real, if it was on the street, I don't care if I can break the bridge of his nose and crack his jaw with the power, which most people would tap to that kind of stuff, but it doesn't matter because I can't choke his face. I can't choke him unconscious if I'm choking his face. So you should always be practicing for what you want, okay? But if he's not tapping, he drops his chin, don't be too worried about making him a good knee, okay? So if I'm here and he's falling to the opposite side, I can always switch. You should always be willing to make those little adjustments because you'll catch people more often. Don't get tunnel vision onto one sub or one position. The more you open up, the more willing to be able to let go of things for good reason. Right? Not just, oh, he's resisting, so I'm going to stop. No. Okay? Be willing to switch. Cool? Any questions? Pretty straightforward. Easy choke. Um, just remember that. Uh, ice cream scoop there. Okay? Alright, guys.
Grab a drink, clear your throats, and...